Hi Internet, I've just released a new version of Kandu, the cross-platform Pi menu which I'm developing. And in this short video I want to show you what is new in that version. Alright, let's jump right into it. I think we're just gonna go through the changelog here and I will tell you more about the individual additions. So first we now have custom icon themes. So for the very first time you can add now your very own icons to the items of Kandu. And to do this you only have to open the config directory of Kandu and where that is depends on your operating system. You can have a look at the documentation and there you will find the paths based on your operating system here. Alright, so what you have to do is to go to that directory on Linux is in the config subdirectory in your home and add a icon themes folder to that directory and any subdirectory you put in here with icons inside will be loaded as a custom icon theme. So for instance here I have the Numix icon theme which I downloaded from the internet and this folder here contains about um, 11,000 of uh, different items. The others for instance they also have subdirectories in here that's also supported and contain also several thousands of icons. Alright and if you have done this and restarted Kandu you will now see that in this icon theme selector drop down here in addition to the built-in icon themes, you now also have those folders which you added to the icon themes directory. So for instance, here you can now browse through the thousands and thousands of icons of the Numix theme and choose whichever you like for your menu. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The next thing is that we also now have icon name tooltips in the icon picker. So if you hover your mouse over one of those items here, you will see the name, the file name of that particular icon. And this also works for the built-in icon themes. There we can also see the name of that icon. Yeah, and this is useful if we want to remember the name of an icon or want to find an icon again to use it later. All right, next we can now copy items in the menu editor. This is also very, very useful. So if you want to duplicate such a submenu here, for instance, you can now drag it somewhere and hold the control key pressed. And if you drop it, then you will create a copy of set item. And yeah, this works for submenus and for other menu items as well. All right, next we have menu templates. Yeah, the tab here in the middle this was called stash before this now got renamed to templates and it behaves slightly different so to use templates you just have to drag something down here again keep control pressed if you want to create a copy down here and you can now use this as a template to create an arbitrary number of copies of that item so just move it up here and now you have a copy of this weblinks item and this not only works in this menu but also if you have a new menu for instance and you want to have this weblinks sub menu in here and it also not only works for menu items and sub menus it also works for entire menus so if you want for instance to make this youtube menu here a template you can just drag this over here and now you can use this template to create an arbitrary number of youtube menus here and base your new menus on that as a template. All right, and to delete a template, you just move it to the trash tab. All right, I'll also remove this new menu here. So next we have menu scaling. So this is a somewhat hidden feature, but you can now hit Control Shift Plus once Kandu is open to scale up the menu. And this will be helpful if you are on a high resolution screen where the menu used to be a bit too small. It will also scale up the menu editor, so this may also then look better on high resolution screens. To reduce the scale again, use Ctrl minus and Ctrl zero to reset the scale to the default scaling. All right, next we have the anchored mode. Before we only used to have the centered mode for menus, so once checked the menu will always open at the screen center now we also have the anchored mode you will find it now here in the sub menu and if you enable the anchored mode the menu will still open at your mouse pointer but it will always stay at that location so if you now select a sub menu 
This submenu will not open at your mouse pointer anymore, but at the location where you opened the menu. And this way the menu will always stay at that exact position on your screen. Some people seem to prefer this behavior, but in a recent video I explained in detail why I think that you should try to learn the default behavior of can do first. I will link the video up here. I can quickly demonstrate this. So up here we have an item which once selected just shows a notification. And with anchored mode selecting this items work, works like this. So I first have to move my mouse here, then there, then there. And if anchored mode was disabled, I could use marking mode. And th then selecting this item looks simply like this. And this is much more fun. You should try to learn this first because it will be much more rewarding in the end, at least in my opinion. All right, then we have um, new version notifications. You will now get notified whenever there is a new version of Kandu available for you to download. All right, then we now have so-called info placeholders in the command menu items. And what that is, I will show you. So you can now, if you have one of those command launch application items here, you can now put in the command field here placeholders, which, be, which will be replaced by Kandu. So for instance, if I put in here, hello world from window name, put an exclamation mark. Then if I select that item here, you will see hello world from, and that's the name of the window, which had input focus when you opened the menu. So for instance, if we call this item from our file browser here, it will say hello world from Kandu because that directory is called Kandu here. And this not only works for the window title, it also works for the application's name and for the pointer location where you opened the menu. And yeah, this is a pretty advanced feature, but you can use those as arguments to your custom scripts and therefore your menu items can now do different things depending on which window had been in focus when you opened the menu or depending on the pointer location. Yeah, and I'm curious what you use this feature for. I think it can be used for very, very advanced stuff. Yeah, and last but not least, we now have app images for Linux. So if you head over to the releases page, you will see in the downloadable assets here that there is now an app image which you can download and run on almost any Linux distribution. All right. Yeah, that's it for the new features. There's also a bunch of uh, changes and also a lot of bug fixes. Yeah, you can have a look at the list. It's mostly about renaming things, reorganizing things in the menu editor and many quality of life changes. But still, I think it should improve the overall user experience significantly. Yeah, that's it for now. I hope you like all those new additions. Just head over to GitHub and download the latest release of uh, Kandu and play around with it. And if you have any issues, questions or comments, you can just drop a comment either directly here on YouTube or you join our Discord server. And as always, you can support the future development of Kandu on my Kofi page, to which the link is also below this video in the description. Alright, that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.